Hello everybody. In this video I will show how to use slider control in a dialog box. Here is the website from Microsoft about this class. Here are all the member functions and so on. I have already done this project before and I will now show how it will look after we finish this. So here is the dialog box. And we will also create this kind of static control which will show the colors. We already done this before, but now we're just going to use it here also. If we change these values, we can see the color value there and the color. And when I press OK, we can also see it here. And when, if, when we go back there, it remembers kind of the settings and and we can change it to something else. Nice, isn't it? So let's go and do this. First we need to create SDI project. I've already done this. I'm not going to do it here because I want to keep this short. But I will put a link below in the description field how to do this. I've done this many times, so you can just watch those videos if you are not familiar with how to do this. And also how to launch a dialogue from the project. So let's go and start doing this. So there is the menu item. And so this is going to be the menu element which triggers and starts the dialog box. And where is the dialog itself? Here is the dialog. Now I will create first a class for this dialog. Add class. I will name it slider dialog. And let's choose a dialog from there. There it goes. There is the menu handler function. Let's include that dialog class here. Slider. That one. And let's launch that dialog box here. Aha, because I changed that the ID needs to be changed in this class. So I'll go and go here. Select the dialog. And let's have a nice ID for the dialog. So let's call it slider. I copy that ID. Let's go and make sure that the dialog has has um, same IDs. This is the dialog class we just created. So this just need to make sure that this ID is exactly the same what we have in the resource view. And let's go also and double check the CPP file and there also we need to have there. Yes, let's compile now and see if there are any other errors. Ah, there's one more thing. Now, this is good to know, by the way, that why, why we get this error. It can't see that the resource ID. This ID is, by the way, in the resource.h in this file. Let me show that. Before we go into this h file, we need to always close this rc file. This is a rc file, resource file. We need to close that. And now we can double click that one. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, so let's go and see if this this is there. So here are all the IDs of all the controls. Uh huh. It is there. So it is there. So we have that there. So we should be able to use it. So why? Now the question is that why why it's complaining? It's complaining because we haven't included the application H file. So I'm gonna include the application H file. In this case, the name is DLG lesson, this one. 
DLC lesson. That's the application file. All of these CPP files, they normally include that application file, like here, for example, the view here. That's the way we do it here. So now it will see that and I will compile. And let's see, we can launch it. Okay, there it goes. Let's go and start building up the slider slider dialog box now. We will go there, make it a little bit bigger. Let's find the slider control from here. There, and put it there. And make it bigger. Now I will just copy and paste this because we need three of them. We are aiming to have red, green and blue. All the colors can be expressed by red mix of red, green and blue. So that's what we're going to do here as we see from this example code. So we're going to have these red, green and blue sliders. Let's copy that, paste, paste again. So now we have three of them here just put it nice and the way we can adjust them we should have here i think it's one of these so we select all of these and then we choose one of these to align them yeah like that and then also uh, align them like yeah that way so they have even space like vertically speaking. Okie dokie, and now let's make it nice. And uh, copy, paste, paste. And uh, again, let's align them by the left, like that looking pretty good let's move them a little bit i'm using the arrow arrow to move a little bit down and let's change that text that will be red ouch caps lock on red red green blue isn't it? red green RGB, red, green and blue. Those are the building blocks for the color. Now next thing we need to do here is that we need to create a control variable, a window variable for each of them. So we go here and then add variable. And now it needs to be a control variable. And um, I will call that slider red that's the name i've chosen aha aha actually cancel because the id is not nice looking i don't like it's one slider one. it should be slider red to be honest with you i cancel and let's go here and change the change the ids first always good to have nice names this needs to be green blue and now save let's go again at variable there it is now it's good and now do it again so slider red slider finish i will show from the code how you can do it from the code like if you have 10 of these you can actually do, do this manually it might be safer to do from here, like I did the first one, but I will show how you can manually do that. So here is that slider red. So what you can do now is that you can copy this here and paste it and just change the name of this red, green, green and blue. And now we need to go to the CPP file of the dialog. And we will see what do we need to change here. So 
it's quite obvious that we need to repeat this one as well so this is the this is the ddx exchange system red green blue this can be safely do like this uh, we, we can do them like here like this there's no magic other than this so everything what we did in the resource view it will modify them in these two files and nothing else so we can also modify them ourselves if we want there's there's nothing wrong to do like this and like that and that's it so now we have three controls there just a couple of days ago i made a video about how to draw in a dialog box so we're talking about this this one here so this is a static control and we can draw in that static control and i made a lesson about this a couple of days ago so please go and look at that if you're not familiar with this concept go and look at that i will just now do that without explaining too much about this and uh, so it needs to be a static control I'm gonna go here and uh, static control and then let's have a nice nice name just a color static color ID is static color then we need to create a um, control variable for this yeah and that will be called I already have that name here I'm just gonna copy it from here so like that and it's gonna be a static at this point okay that's done so here is the static control variable as I showed in the other video in order to draw in this this static control we need to create a new class which is inherited from this one so i'm gonna do that one now so this section now uh, you can go to the other video and look how i did it i will not explain it in detail here i'll just do it so so we will go to the project class wizard we will need to add our own static uh, class and i will call call it like in the other video i will call it color static control needs to be inherited from c static and then okay there it is so this is the this is this is the control class we're gonna use instead of static and now i will replace that c static by that one and we need to include that header file like that so now we have this nice class and we can use that to do the drawing let's go now into this class where is it sorry i mean this one sorry um so we need to add the paint handler so let's go here and add the paint paint message handler so we can draw here i'm gonna go here and wm paint is there so now we can draw here okay and now I, I will put the code here how to draw draw the color in that window i'm just gonna copy that i've already done that in the other lesson video so i'm just gonna now copy copy and paste it's gonna be basically the same same code than that in that video we will be having red green and blue so this class will store red green and blue values and it will it will draw that color here so we need to have red green and blue i will quickly create that here int red green blue 
and then we are using those here the code is almost the same as in the video but not exactly so and here we just need to remove that one so in this in this project we have just red green and blue here okay so this is how we can draw that so this section this is the section which draws that background color into that static control and here is the text portion where we are drawing the, the color values here red green and blue we are creating the string first we are placing the placing the red value there green value there and blue value there and then we're gonna do the text out into the window in place 10 and 10 let's just test this for fun i put a red i draw a red color there so i put zero zero here and full red so red is two five five and the other ones are zero that should be a red color let's see if that works okay hopefully it doesn't crash ah there it goes good start it's working and also the text is correct now let's make this working such that when we are moving uh, this this uh, slider the redness should increase and decrease and we, we should see live the change there to do that we need to we need to handle the scroll scroll message for that slider and here is the website talking about it slider not notification messages this is a microsoft website documentation a slider control notifies its parent window so what is the parent window in this case well the parent of that slider is the dialog box if we run this one so this is the dialog box so this is a child window of this dialog box so the parent of this slider control is this dialog box okay let's continue a slider content notifies its parent window which is the dialog box in our case of user actions by sending the parent wm hate scroll and uh, we we scroll we have this one because we have we have horizontally those uh, sliders our sliders are horizontally placed so we will only get this one so let's create a message handler for this one so that we can handle that message when the slider slider is moved how to do that we will first select the the dialog box which is this one then we go to the class view and then we go and find that that message wm hates something w hates there it is hates s scroll hates scroll okay so here it comes when we are when we are sliding the control it, it it goes here okie dokie so what do we need to do here well here we need to change the color of that static control to do that i or i created a helper function to do that because we're gonna probably call this thing many times so what I did, I did is that I created this kind of helper function to update the col color of that window. We might need to call this many times. That's why I created this helper function. And we need to put that um, the name of the function here. So I create the private section. Place the name of the function here. So let's see what this function is doing okay and um, now this color is a little bit different what we have here we have a little bit modified because the way i did it in my project was a little bit different so we have here red yes okay so let's comment it out okay so the red the static control has red green and blue so let's go to the static control one more time so the static control which we just created it has those variables red green and blue so we need to set those ones to be uh, whatever uh, the sliders are at the moment so the sliders needs to be be synced 
with those variables. So when I move this one a little bit here, when I move this one, always this slider controls slider controls red, green and blue needs to be correspondingly always updated. So if I do like this, for example, in this situation, this red should be 255 and 00. zero. And if I move this one here, now these values should be 255, 255 and 0. So these values need to be updated live as we are moving the slider. That's the thing here. And when we are moving the slider, we will go here and then we will update using this function. We will update that, that static control. And the way we get that value from the slider, there is a function called getPos get pause so we can call slider red get pause but the question now arises that how does this control know that it needs to give values between 0 and 255 because when it's here we need to get the value 0 right and when we are going to the middle it needs to be something like 1 120 and when we go to the end, we need to have a value 255. It works here correctly because I did this project myself. The way it, the way we do that is that when we create those controls, we will tell, we will tell the, the slider control that what is the range. And we haven't done that yet, so let's do that next. We need to set the range for the for those for those controls. Okay, and that can be done in an in initialization function of the of the dialog box. So we need to add the initialization function. So we select the dialog box and then on initialize that one on on initialize dialog. So here we can set the range of the slider. So let's go and do that here. Is it? I don't remember the name, but I think it's it's set range. It's set range. Oh, I'm using the wrong wrong variable. This needs to be the slider variable. My mistake. I need to use this one. It's the red slider variable, and now we have the set range. Set range. There it is. And this is going to be the minimum value of the slider when when it's on the left hand side so that we want zero there the color zero zero and when the slider is at the right hand side we want to have 255 so that's the maximum value of the slider when it's on the right hand side so let's now do the same thing for the other two I double click and paste Okay, so now the now the ranges are correct. So that means that when the slider is on the left hand side, we get zero. And get position now returns the value of the slider at the moment. So if the slider is in the middle, this get position returns 125, something like that. So now we need to update the other two values for the for the color control. So red, green, and blue. This will be green. And lastly, blue. Obviously, we are only changing the integer values of this of this um, this control, but the control doesn't know that it needs to needs to redraw that it needs to draw again that area it it doesn't know that it needs to update the window so we need to here also ask it to update its window so let's create a helper function here let's call it um redraw Tr redraw your draw yourself kind of update yourself invalidate the whole whole 
uh, static control date and then update window will start the drawing this will start the drawing this will makes the whole window like dirty and this one says that uh, draw it right now so let's call that function now from the dialog box oh one more thing one more thing i think is missing when we launch the dialog box uh, the color of that window needs to be correct even when we are initializing so we need to call that function also when we are initializing the initializing the dialog and i forgot to put it here <laughs> so this is the this is where one of this is where one of the sliders has been moved so it comes here each time when one of the uh, one of the sliders is moved it comes here so we need to always call that function also from here and now it should do that okay zero 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 it's correct isn't it so the, it's a black zero is black and now i'm moving this one yeah it works okay it works good 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 so now let's let's just finish this so that when we press ok we will see that color here also so to do that we need to have variables in a view the same way so i have a private section here and we have the red green and blue values here the same way as we had them in the in the in the color color uh, control so i just copy those and let's just paste them here and um, let's start uh, with white i start with white because that's the default value if we never opened the dialog box i think white is a good default value so i just put 255 255 by default so it's a white window by default and when we launch the dialog box then after that we keep changing it and now let's go to the drawing section in a view so view cpp there's the draw and we will open the comment so we can use the drawing context variable and now we're gonna draw exactly the same thing here as we are drawing in the, the stat in the static control so let's go to the static control uh, draw function we can simply just copy all of that because it's going to be very similar only a little bit change this i'm going to copy this so let's see what we need here we don't need that that clipping thing what we did in the other video we don't need that and we don't we don't need to print any text here the only thing we need to print is the color the background color so we are using this pointer here this is the drawing context pointer in this case okie dokie and now aha and now we need to update of course this red green and blue for the view when we finished with the dialog we need to update those three values so let's go and check this if if the dialog ok button was pressed idoc if this uh, dialog object returns idoc it means that the ok button was pressed and in that case we're going to update the, the red green and blue values i've already done it here so i'm going to just copy copy that code save my energy so aha why does it not have the red green and blue let me go and check the dialog box what do we have there slider slider dialog aha because we don't we didn't save them now what we need to do here here next is that when the dialog presses ok at that point the dialog needs to save at the colors because i don't think we can use these controls anymore that the controls are probably deleted at that point so i don't know if we can use the control variables to get the slider positions so we will store them when we press ok we will store those values into indexers here as well so we're going to do one more one more time this same thing i'm going to go to this slider dialog and in a public section let's put those values there 
and now when we press OK button we need to store the slider control positions into those variables so let's create a message handler for the OK button so I select OK and I double click it it will create the handler for the OK button in the dialog class so here before we exit the dialog box just before we exit we will ask the slider control uh, positions just like this and um, and now we have those red, green and blue values these ones in this uh, dialog class so we want to store them there just red, green and blue okay so now they are stored into these variables and now the view can ask these variables that what was the last position of all of those sliders so let's go back now to the view so now this probably works so let's run it now okay let's choose a color here press ok and yahoo it works the only problem now one more thing is that when we start the dialog box don't you agree that this will be now this red color this will be updated according to what is here currently let's fix fix that one quickly and that's easy to fix so when before we launch the control we will set the set the values of those integers uh, here the other way around so we will set the dialog red green and blue with the views red green and blue and then we will s launch the dialog and now in the dialog box we need to use these red green and blue values to set the slider right so sounds complicated but i think it's pretty simple actually and so here we need to here we need to look at those values so the set position we, we need to set the set the position of the sliders here according according to the view isn't it so the view now needs to set the position of the sliders so in in initialization dialog section we need to set the positions of the sliders we can call a function set set position for the slider so whatever value the view has for the red we need to put that there and uh, that value is that red okay and the same thing with the other other ones so the green red green will be the green value and then the blue blue slider so we will initialize the sliders here that will be blue okay so one more time one more time let's go this uh, let's go this so in a view we will create uh, the dialog object but we did not yet launch the dialog object now we initialize the dialog objects indexers red green and blue and then we will launch the dialog when the dialog is launched it will first go to this function before it shows the dialog and here we will we will initialize things for the dialog like the controls and here we can initialize the sliders according to the red green and blue we had here so the sliders red green and blue is set here and then it's important that this function is called after this and then we will update at the color control and let's see if this now works okay as you can see already this is now correct because the because the it should be white first and now let's change this one okay that works and now if we go back here you see it's the same color it it gets that value back here and now we can change it again like that cool programming with mfc is nice and cool isn't it don't you agree i like mfc i hope you also like i've done this since 1997 so okay thank you for watching this video and let's let's see you in the next video